Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna give you just a few minutes to see if anybody else jumps into the call. A couple forewarnings before we get started. Just so you know, we are recording this program and it is airing on our YouTube page. So if you prefer not to be on screen, we just ask you to disable your camera. You will remain muted throughout the program, um, but you are free to ask any questions or say anything in the chat if you have any questions for our presenter today. Um, but yes, thank you for joining us. We'll start here shortly. And I'm Pat from the public Dallas Public Library. Just give us just a minute. <clears throat> okay, so once again, I'm just going to say I'm Pat from the Dallas Public Library. Um, thanks for joining us today um, for our presentation with Garmina, who will be talking about fast fashion with us. Um, you'll be, um, our co my co-host is Helen from the DQS department. So she'll be going over a few things just before we get started. Again, forewarning, we are recording this program. So if you prefer not to be on camera, we just ask that you disable your camera. We will keep you muted throughout the presentation, but if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, for Gardmina to answer throughout the program. But thanks for joining us today. All right, how does, is my, is my presentation about, uh, on screen for everybody? Yes, it is. Yep. All right, great, thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, be programming with you today. Uh, I am Helen Dulac. I am with Dallas Environmental Quality and Sustainability. And we are very, very, very excited to be partnering with the Dallas Public Library on this series, most Thursdays of the month at noon called Earth Day Every Day. I'm gonna give you just a brief little uh, description about my department because you might've never heard of us before. We were formed in 2004, but back then we were called the Office of Environmental Quality or OEQ. What we did is we worked really hard for four years to help Dallas become the first city in the United States to get a special environmental certification called ISO 14001. So what we did is we looked at our operations across 14 different departments in the city to see how we could still provide service and lessen our impact on the environment. So we looked uh, at the vehicles we used all the way to the paper we put in our coffee machine. We made changes and we continue to make changes every year uh, from 2008 till now. And we, and what's remarkable about this is we're talking about Dallas, Texas was the first to achieve this certification. It wasn't a city in California. It wasn't a city in Colorado. It wasn't Austin, it was Dallas. So Dallas does have a history of being green and we just wanna go greener. So let's fast forward to 2018 where a lot of changes happened to this department. There was a restructuring in the city and some environmental programs were moved into uh, this department and we changed our name to Dallas Environmental Quality and Sustainability. Uh, also, we doubled in size with that reorganization. Uh, and with the added personnel, we created a new combined outreach and engagement team that I'm a proud member of. The following year in 2019, uh, Mayor Johnson created a council committee focused on the environment called the Environment and Sustainability Committee. They meet the first Monday of every month at nine o'clock. Those meetings are broadcasted and you can listen to those. And it's a great way to keep a finger on the environmental pulse of the city. You also get to learn about a lot of neat uh, pilot programs and get monthly updates on our climate action plan. Uh, speaking of the climate action plan, that was passed uh, just a few months ago in May of 2020, and it is the Comprehensive Environmental and Climate Action Plan. There is a website dedicated to it. It is climate, DallasClimateAction.com, and you can see the entire 250 pages of the plan, which is a roadmap for the next 30 years of how Dallas is going to progress, improve the uh, environment and quality of life for everyone in the city, at the same time improving the environment. So we invite you to uh, take a look at that, and also, uh, as we start doing things in the city, including this kind of programming, it will all relate back to the CCAP. So I mentioned that we had a, we had a uh, restructuring in the city. 
uh, in our department expanded. And you can see those groups in green are the ones that joined us in 2018. I'm gonna talk about one of those just briefly, and that is stormwater. So stormwater is any time water leaves your property. It could be from the rain, it could be from your sprinkler system, it could be from a hose that was left on. So whenever water goes across the land, the ground, it can pick up pollution along the way. That could be bacteria that's left in pet waste that wasn't picked up. That could be uh, motor fluids that dripped out of cars. It could be any sort of chemicals that were put out on lawns and in uh, gardens. Uh, so those things are actually carried by the water. They go into the street, go down that gutter, all the way to that big drain at the end of the street. And that's called a storm drain inlet. The city has over 70,000 of those. And they're there for one main reason, and that's to remove the water so the streets don't flood during rains. So those drains take the water directly to a creek or stream, and then that creek or stream flows into something else, such as one of our beautiful lakes or eventually the Trinity River. And the Trinity River actually flows another 500 miles and connects all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So I'm sharing this because I just want you guys to realize that pollution that might be at, um, on your property or even in your neighborhood or in the city doesn't always stay here. It can be carried by that storm water into the storm drains, into our surface waters, and end up all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico. So please just be mindful about what's going on outside. Please don't litter. Uh, safely pick up any litter that you can. Always pick up after your pets and take care of any leaking vehicles. So I mentioned the outreach and engagement team that I'm a member of. Well, we want to empower Dallas to save the earth. And we do that by virtual presentations like this and in person when we're allowed. Uh, if you're in Dallas, we can present to your HOA, different kinds of groups and organizations at no cost. We also have a lot of materials for students anywhere from K to college, and we can help you with seminars, activities, and events. If you invite us to speak, what do we talk about? Well, we talk about those environmental topics from A to Z, all the way from air quality to zero waste. And we also host some of our own events. Our most recent one was the 26 Waterwise Landscape Tour. You can do a virtual tour of gardens. You can actually see houses with zero grass. Think about how much time that you save by not mowing and how much water you save by not watering that grass. You can take that virtual tour at savedallaswater.com. And with that, I wanna invite you, if you are uh, interested in more green tips or finding out more about my department, just visit our website, greendallas.net. If you ever need to reach me or anybody that I work with, send an email to greendallas at dallascityhall.com. And of course, follow us on uh, social media. We are Green Dallas TX on Facebook and at Green Dallas on Twitter and Instagram. And for as a thank you gift for spending this time with us today, if you send an email to Green Dallas at DallasCityHall.com, include your name and your mailing address, we will give you a free gift as a thank you for attending our presentation today. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. So uh, Carmina, through her blog, and social media platforms share sustainable fashion styling tips as well as any advice on how to transition into a conscious consumer mindset. She knows building a sustainable closet and getting started can be daunting and overwhelming. Carmina hopes to help people understand that small changes can make a difference and that there is no perfect way to practice sustainable fashion. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to unmute my mic. Awesome. Can everyone Thanks hear me? Joining us, yeah, we can hear yes. you. And okay, we can awesome. see the screen. <clears throat> Yay. Okay. Yeah. So thank you <clears throat> to Dallas Public Library and the Office of Environmental Quality and Sustainability and to Pat for um, inviting me to talk about something that I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, I love fashion, but I also I'm aware that I have to be mindful with my purchases um, because not only do they affect the environment, but they also affect um, garment workers as well. And um, in the introduction, as I mentioned, I do focus that sustainable fashion, there's no perfect way to practice sustainable fashion. So I think this quote is like a, a perfect way to jump into the conversation. Um, it's, we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. So i um, really proud of everyone who's here in this conversation as well, because sustainable fashion can be an uncomfortable conversation to have, especially to find out that maybe your favorite 
place that you shop from isn't doesn't have the most environmental um, like practices and they're not treating their workers correctly. So I'm really proud of y'all for tuning in for, to this conversation as well. So I'm gonna talk about a few definitions and fashion facts as, long as, as well as with some statistics. Then I'll also touch a bit into how to build a sustainable wardrobe and shopping tips as well because Quitting fast fashion can be difficult because it's what we've been used to and what we keep getting like uh, messages, you know, social media and the newsletters. Like I always get newsletters from every day from brands that are like promoting sales. So I'll talk about some shopping tips. I'll also touch a little bit into garment care and repurposing because I think like for me personally, when I was learning about sustainable fashion, I first learned about definitions and facts and then how to build the wardrobe. And I think the next step for me is definitely garment care and repurposing. And then I'll end the conversation with some resources of where you can go to find more information. And it's basically where I get a lot of the information for this and where I continue to learn about um, sustainable fashion. So let me see, is this gonna let me? Okay, there we go. So if anyone on the chat wants to kind of comment um, what comes to mind when you hear the word sustainability, um, you want to go ahead and do that and see if anyone wants to, what comes to your mind or what do you think sustainability means? If anyone wants to put it on the chat. Do we have someone that? said environmentally friendly. Ooh, that's a good one. Mindfulness. Yes. Okay, it's not easy to tell. Yes, okay. Living, oh, I love that one. Living a good world. Long-lasting long lasting and dream. Yeah, those are all good definitions. Okay, so I'll show y'all what I have. Um, so I'm going to be quoting Fashion Revolution a lot, which is one of the resources that I use. And Sustainability, defined by uh, Dominic Jake Ford of Sustainable Brooklyn, is an inherently Black and Brown Indigenous regenerative mechanism for living and engaging with nature. It's grounded in an ancestral relationship with the earth, but has evolved into a resistance of colonial structures that we can all find well-being, joy, and empathy-based healing. And so an example of that would be I got hand on myself, sorry y'all. <laughs> Sustainable fashion brands can produce within the confines of an extra activist economy to create apparel experiences that leave minimal footprints on our planetary system and instill social cultural solutions, which is um, right what you guys said, um, living a good life without harming the world. And a continuous work in progress as a brand must value black and brown relationships that add agency to localize communities in order to truly be sustainable. So that's what sustainability means. And then I have another definition for y'all, which is slow fashion. I am one of my favorite ones because it's a little bit <clears throat> easier to understand. So slow fashion is about rejecting consumeristic impulses and embracing a slower, more mindful model of consumerism, which is what most of you guys mentioned in the chat. Um, it doesn't mean that you like stop shopping completely, but it really focuses on buying things that you need and items of quality that will last. And it's about being conscious about what you buy and how what you purchase will impact others and the environment. So not only you know do things like fashion production affect the environment, but like as I mentioned before, it also affects the garment workers and their immediate environment that they live in. So the opposite of slow fashion is obviously fast fashion. So fast fashion is a term that describes clothing that is quickly and cheaply produced. And brands and retailers that engage in fast fashion often create products based on seasonal trends directly inspired by the runaway and in most cases, they also steal from independent designers as well. Um, and fast fashion brands are also generally associated with overproduction, low retail prices, mass waste, 
poor working conditions and negative environmental impact. So I have another question for y'all. Um, what year was the term fast fashion introduced? So I have a few multiple choice questions if you wanna, uh, answers if you wanna drop it in the chat. Um, A, 2001, B, 1947, C, 1989, or D, 2006. When do you think, or how old do you think this term is? 2006, okay, okay. Like seven, D, 2006. Does anyone wanna say why they think their answer might be correct or like kind of like their reasoning behind that answer maybe? Be curious to see what y'all have to say. Anyone? Before I get 80s, ooh, okay, okay. That's a good answer. The 80s were, were huge for fashion. Yep, for sure. Okay, so the correct answer is 1989. So yes, the 80s were definitely huge for fashion. And the term was coined by the New York Times in response to Zara basically bragging that it only took them 15 days to ideate a design and get it into stores. So that's, uh, I mentioned earlier that <clears throat> sometimes these fast fashion companies copy designs that maybe like independent designers took a while to create and to make, like fashion production takes time. And so the fact that these companies um, produce it so fast, every time I read this, it just, it just still uh, shocks me, even though like I know that like I know this information, it's just like, yeah. And yeah, I didn't realize the term also had been around that long. I would think it was maybe like something in the 2000s, but no. And also actually interesting fact, um, I had 1947 in there because that's how long H&M has been around. So they have been doing this for quite a while. Okay, so now that we know um, how quickly fast fashion is produced, how many seasons do you think uh, fast fashion has? So this is another another question that I have. I think this is maybe the last one I have for y'all. 52, okay, okay, 60, so be good. 14, okay, okay. Those are good answers. 27, but I feel like every two weeks. Yeah, definitely, for sure. There's, trust me, there's always something new. Okay, so the correct answer is 52. Under fast fashion, trends cycle at an unprecedented rate. And so instead of two seasons, the industry undergoes 52 micro seasons. That's why I put it in quotes because um, how many seasons are there? So there's 52 micro seasons. So that's like basically like new garments every week. And then if you <laughs> live on Instagram like me, sometimes I'll stumble across like, I guess like Instagram boutiques or just like other fast fashion retailers. And on the bio, it'll say like new garments every day. And it's just, it just, when you have all this information, it just kind of puts into perspective like how much clothes is being produced and so quickly. And I mean, if clothes is being produced so quickly, then I mean, you can only imagine how the garment workers are just basically overworked as well and underpaid. Okay, and then just a little bit of background to kind of put into perspective like the whole 52 seasons, why that is honestly a lot. Typically, fashion is built around the concept, concept of season. So typically, like whenever you dress yourself, you're like, oh, it's cold outside, right? Like I need a jacket. Or if it's summertime, maybe something a little bit lighter. So that's how fashion is built too, around, around the seasons. And so we have four seasons. Sometimes Texas just has two. <laughs> but, you know, we have winter, spring, summer, and fall. And out of those four, uh, big designers, but also independent designers will combine them into two seasons. So it'll be spring and summer, autumn and winter, or fall and winter. So it just kind of, it's a, it's a good information to have to see how much 
the fact that fast fashion has 52 seasons as opposed to maybe more independent designers or, or smaller businesses produce these items at a slower pace. So I just kind of wanted to have that information so you guys could see like how much it is. And so <clears throat> you might be wondering maybe where did sustainable fashion come from? What, how did this conversation start? And uh, this movement started in after the collapse of Rana Plaza, which is a building in Bang Bangladesh. And more than 1,100 people died and another 2,500 people were injured. Um, and this makes it the fourth largest industrial disaster in history. And after this event or this you know, disaster, uh, an organization that I've been quoting a lot, Fashion Revolution started and basically started calling for greater transparency, sustainability and ethics in the fashion industry. And most of the victims um, were young women and they were manufacturing clothing for well-known global fashion brands. I don't have like the names of that, but according to Fashion Revolution, that's the uh, information that was given. So this is basically the, what kind of made people realize that we have a problem when it comes to fashion production. And so that's how the fashion revolution movement started and how some of the people that I follow uh, on Instagram as well started their um, message with sustainable fashion. And um, here's some more facts about how does the fashion industry contribute to climate change. And this is also uh, luxury fashion. It's not just fast fashion that pollutes you know the environment. It's like fashion in general too because they are also producing. So 63% of clothes is made from synthetic fibers such as polyester, acrylic, and nylon. And all of those are plastic and they're made from fossil fuels. And so processing, the processing and turning of fossil fuels to textiles releases significant amounts of greenhouse gases. And then I have this other graphic here from Fashion Revolution as well that producing plastic-based fibers from textiles uses around 342 million barrels of oil every year. Um, another kind of like shocking, interesting facts about fashion production is that uh, the dyes, when they dye the clothing, if it's not disposed properly, it can also pollute waterways and rivers. And then cotton as well can be kind of uh, harmful as well because it requires a lot of pesticides, insect, insecticides, and it alters ecosystems and biodiversity. And I have one more kind of shocking fact. Um, 150 million trees are logged every year to be turned into cellulose textiles like viscose. So those are pretty shocking kind of facts to hear when it comes to um, fast fashion and just fashion production in general, which kind of leads us to, okay, now we have all this information. This is kind of like a lot, uh, we didn't realize. And there's more like numbers out there, but I wanted to make sure I had enough to talk about in the time that I have today. But it also leads us to, you know, how, how can we help? Um, how can we dress ourselves and be more mindful, like I keep saying, of the environment and garment workers? And if the number of times a garment is worn were double, then greenhouse gas emissions over its lifetime would be 44% lower. So now, um, we'll jump into how to build a sustainable wardrobe plus a few shopping tips. So kind of like, um, I kind of keep saying this too, we can't buy our way into sustainability or we can't shop our way into sustainability. Uh, I think with the rise of, you know, people more interested in oh, sustainability, um, we kind of have maybe like, for example, 
influencers telling you or people telling you like, oh, the only way to be sustainable is if you buy a certain item or if you do this. But really kind of like the most sustainable way to be or the most sustainable practice is to use what you already have. Um, that's always going to be the most sustainable practice and also the most budget friendly as well because sustainable brands can be a bit overpriced for obvious reasons that they're using more environmental friendly materials and paying the workers living wages and they have better working conditions. So um, clearly one way to build a sustainable wardrobe is use what you already have um, something too is normalized repeating outfits. I don't know if anyone wants to comment uh, uh, or drop in the chat and say maybe why they don't like to repeat outfits or what their uh, look outlook is on repeating outfits. For me in high school, I hated <laughs> repeating outfits. So I had a lot of clothes. Like, trust me, I was one of those like fast fashion people that had too much clothes in my closet. And I feel like they try to like brands try to sell us the idea that the more clothes you have, the easier it is to get dressed. But uh, personally for me, that never worked. So um, I think it's a myth. And also um, I know people who shop more than I do. Like they literally shop almost every week or every other week, but they still wanna buy my clothes or like they're still not happy with what they have. So I'm going to go ahead and read what you guys said. Um, so Daisy said, when I love something, I want to wear it over and over again. Yes, me too. Like, I feel like I know some like the younger people have said like, oh, they don't want to show an outfit twice on Instagram. But if my outfit is nice, like, I don't care. I'm going to post all the pictures. If I, you know, if I look good and I feel good, like I'm going to wear, wear it again. And that's the point of like clothes, like you're supposed to wear it. Like you're supposed to wear it. It's not supposed to, you know, just sit in your closet. So that's a really good answer. Let's see, Narda says, I used to do the same way, but I love repeating outfits now and focusing on getting pieces that are more versatile. Yes, that's always good. I love getting pieces that are versatile. So anything that maybe I can wear to work, but then I could, you know, after COVID or pre-COVID, you know, go to an art gallery or something else or, you know, wear on vacation. Um, let's see, Brittany said, if I paid $50 for a dress, I'm wearing it forever. Yes, that too, definitely. Also, because I think fast fashion brands have really trying to get us to think that fashion is just disposable. Like, oh, okay, I bought this, whatever, like I'll get something new, who cares? So those are really good. I mix and match items and dress them up in different ways. Yes, that's great. Let's see, creativity too, yes. Take more creativity to refresh your pretty outfits and put on new pieces. I'm addicted to thrift shopping. It's fun. Yeah. Yes, me too. Thrift shopping is fun. Oops, I have to go back. Okay, awesome. Those are really good. I love this. Awesome. And then I think another way too, I don't know. Um, when I was in high school, I used to borrow clothes from friends. So like we were kind of, you know, unconsciously where being sustainable and on a budget as well. Um, obviously right now because of COVID, maybe that's not as accessible, but borrowing clothes and having a clothes swap is also something really fun. I know, you know, some people will, will do like a clothes swap where they bring clothes that they don't want and, you know, gather with friends and have like wine or coffee and just kind of swap out clothes and um, that's a really good way to bring new pieces into your wardrobe uh, for free or depending if you know you have to pay uh, but the ones that most people recommend are the ones like among friends and you could do that and then you're bringing new pieces into your wardrobe and they were free I used to work um as a salon receptionist. So I got really lucky that sometimes my coworkers were tired of like accessories or just clothes. So I would like get free clothes. Actually, some of the earrings that I'm wearing that I always get compliments on, a coworker took to work because she didn't want them anymore. I obviously disinfected them, but I, whenever people compliment me on the earring, I just, you know, I can't say where they're from because I got them from, from my coworker as well. Um, let's see. Okay buy better fabrics that last longer and air dry is awesome. Yes, that is very true. I'm gonna, gonna touch into that in a little bit. So yeah, that's one way. Um, 
Another, of course, as it was mentioned, um, shopping secondhand at the thrift store is a great way to also be uh, build a sustainable wardrobe. There's also things like uh, Depop, Etsy, Buffalo Exchange. Um, it's really cool because on Etsy, there's a lot of people who hand make their stuff. So they're small businesses and they're not producing as much stuff as places such as you know Zara, Fashion Nova, Forever 21. And um, definitely with COVID, obviously thrift shopping, you know, you might not feel comfortable, but you can maybe, instead of maybe scrolling through Instagram, maybe one day you can try out Depop. It's an app where people, it's basically like an online thrift store where you can just shop and browse and see kind of what, if there's anything you like that fits your budget and, you know, you safely do it from your home and then the items get shipped to you. And Etsy is another one that's really good. I know I just mentioned it, but I was on there, I think last week and um, there's a lot of like people who do like handmade stuff and made to order stuff is also really good, which also buying from small businesses and local businesses is also a really great way to build a sustainable wardrobe as well. Um, like this brand that I have right here on the slide at Fruity Palms, it's like blocking. Um, their Instagram says that the, the orders are handmade and they're made to order, which that's kind of how things were like back in the day before fast fashion started. So I think that's really great. Also, um, just be mindful. I know some people, you know, get really passionate about sustainable fashion and then they'll kind of like, not as, they, they kind of like maybe bully small businesses and they're like, you're not sustainable, you're not doing this. But just keep in mind that sometimes uh, small businesses, they're not producing as much, like I mentioned, as the other brands. So just be nice. <laughs> Let's see what people are saying in the chat. Modern washing machines have delicate and hand washing settings that you can adjust the water level. Yes, I just kind of started doing that. I didn't realize that was there, but it's there. I love comfortable clothes that are natural colors to mix and I love making simple yes simple sewing love it we're not experts but it helps to make rid of clothing and I get rid of clothes awesome yes so I grew up in Mexico for a little bit and so um one of my aunts she's like the expert when it comes to sewing so whenever I needed anything altered my mom would take it to her and she would either you know make it shorter because I was uh, it was too long on me or if it needs to, to go in a little bit so she was an expert at that so yeah definitely some of us kind of grew up with with that okay and so now I kind of have a quick four-step beginner's guide to sustainable fashion and I took this from one of my blog posts so kind of the first one is to shop less even if it's fast fashion is a start I know fast fashion is really difficult to 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 quit. Like you get it on on Instagram, everywhere on social media, you know, and it's it's just accessible, you know. You're like, oh, okay, that's cheap. So, and it's what you've known, like that's what I've known since I was like in high school. So I can say like, yeah, quitting fast fashion is difficult. So, you know, just like I said, take your time and. Even if you are shopping at a fast fashion retailer, be more mindful of what you're buying. Like, okay, like you guys mentioned in the chat, you you like to buy pieces that are versatile. So like, for example, I haven't been able to find pants that fit me right at the thrift store. So like I have had to check out some fast fashion retailers for pants. So if I'm there, I make sure like, is this a pants that I'm going to like? I try to also inspect, you know, the material and make sure I think it's gonna be durable. So those are some ways that you can reduce your consumption, even if you're still shopping at a fast fashion retailer, because it's definitely like changing into a sustainable lifestyle and, and fashion is not like easy. Like it's definitely hard. It's going to take time. And so if there's something that you really need and that that's what you have access to at a fast fashion retailer, then, you know, don't feel bad. Just like I said, like just tone down, slow down the shopping process. Um, pass it down. Yes, we have a lot of girl grandbabies, so we save the clothes and pass it down for my daughters and always keep my clothes. Yes, that's super good too. Another one um, for step two 
sustainable beginner's guide to sustainable fashion is to really think about your purchases i think with you know online shopping and sales all the time like i get emails from certain brands that i'm subscribed to their newsletters because i just like to see how they i just like to study how they always send emails every day there's always a sale there's something and you know they have some clever words that are catchy but i guess i'm just so detached from like wanting to shop all the time that I'm just kind of like read the email and sometimes like I'll like look at the item that they're recommending and then I'm like okay well I'm not gonna buy it so really uh think about your purchases slow down the process um because we're so used to uh, okay this is cute it's you know ten dollars let me add it to the cart you know whatever it doesn't matter if I am gonna wear it or not it's cheap I'm just in my closet so um just be intentional uh, avoid impulse or emotional pur purchases. One of uh, the uh, people I follow on Instagram, her name is Aja Barber. One of her advices is whenever you go shopping is to make sure you're wearing something you, you like. Because whenever you're wearing, for example, maybe something you don't really like, you know, maybe sweatpants or something, or you're not comfortable when you're wearing, if you don't feel good, then you're going to be more, uh, you're going to want to shop as opposed to if you're wearing like your favorite dress or your favorite top or something that you like feel cute in, then you're gonna be like, oh, you know what? I guess I don't really need this. As opposed to, you know, if you're just like not as dressed up and you go and you're like, well, you know, I need this because look at how I look. So um, that's one way. Me personally, sometimes I, um, there's like, a shoe that I want because sometimes shoes I don't buy them used and so I'll like think about if I really want this shoe for like a month so that's how I sometimes make my decisions whenever there's things that maybe I try looking at the thrift store I tried looking at Depop or I tried to see if there was any sustainable brands in my budget and I didn't have any luck then I'll be like okay what brand could I what you know fast fashion brand could I consider buying from and so I really kind of like go through a process of elimination whenever it comes to shopping from those um, those brands. So that's something that you could also practice is just really slowing down when it comes to shopping. And then most importantly, do what works for you. I'm gonna keep mentioning, don't feel pressured. There's no perfect way to be sustainable. Maybe you're like, I don't know, I can't get into the facts of wearing used clothes that's just weird to me I know some people don't feel comfortable wearing used clothes but maybe for example I have found some really cute purses at the thrift store um I don't know if um can y'all see me or can you only see the screen we can see you it's a oh, small okay. it's a small screen okay. but we can see you. well I'll show y'all so this is a purse that I got at the thrift store it was less than ten dollars and this is kind of like what a lot of fast fashion brands are selling and you know maybe you're like I just I just don't want to use work wear used clothes that's kind of weird you can always like go and see accessories that's also a great way to you know make your outfits look a little bit better without even trying and all you have to do is just really disinfect the purses so I've been getting really lucky I don't know I've just have had this thing that I've just been finding really good purses at the thrift store. I have this one too that I'm going to show y'all. This one's actually from Buffalo Exchange, but it's like a really nice spacious bag. I like that I can fit like a notebook and books in here and it has like really nice detailing. But this is also um, from the thrift store as well. So that's a, a great way to incorporate a sustainable wardrobe as well. So just kind of decide like what you want to do um, and then also, lastly, you don't have to buy your way into sustainability. I think with the rise of maybe like sustainable influencers, we'll see more, instead of them recommending, you know, shopping from Fashion Nova, they'll be like, oh, we'll shop from here and shop from there. But like that you don't have to buy your way into it or shop your way into it, use what you already have is always going to be the most sustainable way as well. So let's see. You can eat. I hope I'm saying that right. Thrifting is great. Keep in mind that all items need to be washed. Yes, thrift stores do not disinfect or wash items. That is very true. Um, and also, I think it's important to 
be mindful wherever it is that you're shopping to because I used to be the kind of person that I used to thrift shop and I was like okay this is cheap I'm just gonna get it whatever and then it would just sit in my closet as well so um overconsumption can also come into sustainability whether you're shopping at the thrift store whether you're shopping at a a sustainable brand because I feel some people will be like okay well cool I'll just you know buy from a sustainable brand and they'll just like buy 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 but that's really you know not the purpose of that it's slowing down the process and being more mindful of your purchases um so I think it's really important to be mindful wherever it is that you're shopping whether it's that you know H&M Zara whether it's that maybe like a, a sustainable fashion retailer like Everlane or even at the thrift store make sure that you are buying what you're going to use because that way you can leave especially if you're shopping at the thrift store leave items that other people also need as well so make sure whatever it is that you're buying that you're going to use and also that it fits your uh what's in your wardrobe as well so it makes it easier for you to get dressed as well that's always a good um thing that i have and then here's another one kind of like reminder like i just said avoid making impulse or emotional purchases. Don't buy stuff you don't need just because it's cheap. I used to be that person. I was like, this is cheap, uh, whatever, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna need it. But then, you know, <clears throat> I quickly realized that, well, not quickly realized, but I realized that, oh, okay, like I have things in my closet with tags on that I just don't wear anymore, what is going on? And then buy things you'll wear 30 times or more. So. Something that I also like to ask myself is like, could I wear this thing every day, like seven days straight? I did that experiment actually during like the beginning of the pandemic. I wore this one t-shirt for seven days straight. It was fun, but then after a while, I didn't know how to style it. But ask yourself those things whenever you're shopping. So, you know, maybe you, you look at some sustainable brands. I myself can't afford sustainable brands as well. They're pretty pricey. Um, if you're like let's say you go to Zara and you're going to buy something you know ask yourself um, will I wear this more than 30 times or more like if I had to wear this seven days straight could I could I do it um and as someone mentioned too versatility is always great I always look for versatile items and of course taking care of your clothes is going to definitely make it last as well so um, here are some COVID has increased my retail pair. <laughs> yeah, yes, I know COVID. COVID has been interesting, so because COVID has made some people realize, like, oh, I don't need that much clothes. But then COVID has also, you know, made people shop a little bit more. So here are some like eco-friendly fabrics. Um, there's recycled fabric fiber that are made with waste material. There's also plant-based fibers which have low environmental impact, uh, animal-based fibers, which are produced in a, if they're produced in a suitable way, and then semi-synthetic, which is uh, with low em environmental impact. So um, those are some materials that maybe uh, you could see to purchase items from. And then I'll touch a bit into garment care and repair. So I'll actually be honest, I kind of barely started reading label care instructions. I want to say like a year or two, I I'm like haven't been doing this, but whenever you uh, buy something, I now that whenever I shop, I always, you know, make sure everything is like sewn correctly because sometimes even if you're shopping at a retailer too, sometimes they have garments that are kind of like already damaged. So I always inspect everything. I touch the fabric and make sure it's nice. But then I also read the care instructions. So I'm like, okay, make sure I follow those. Um, and it, that's gonna help also make your garments last longer as well. So the care instructions will usually say how to wash it, how to dry it. And it'll even say like, should you iron it or should you not? And you know, making sure you store your items correctly too. Um, if they're going to last longer, I typically usually hang most of my items, but, you know, folding, just make sure you're taking care of them as well, wherever you store them. Also, I like to wash most of my stuff. No dry cleaning items for me. I've heard that too. Um, I like to wash my stuff with uh, cold water and most of the 
garments, most of the fabrics do pretty well on cold water, but it also takes more energy to heat up the water whenever you're uh, washing with hot water. So I personally like to do cold water. And then also air drying your garments is more eco-friendly as well. And not only that, but you're saving some on your energy bill. So whether you live on your own or whether you live you know, with your parents or roommates, if you air dry your garments, you're gonna be saving a little bit more money on your, uh, is it electricity bill? Yeah, so that's always good. And then another thing, my screen is not so good. Is try making items yourself or you know repurposing them i i just kind of realized last weekend that i kind of know how to sew i'm not like that perfect or good at it but i bought an item at the thrift store that i i usually always inspect everything i buy but i was so like mesmerized by the pattern that i didn't realize there was any rips so i don't have the item to show it to y'all but i you know, just kind of figured it out. And so that's a way that you could um, take care of your garments, repair, repurpose them. And so another thing that would be good is to follow content creators who promote repairing garments instead of convincing you to shop. Um, I think that's definitely um, something to, you know, to keep in mind. So I love social media, but I know that for some people, it can be toxic, but if you follow the right people, like social media is a, a really fun place. So for me, I personally follow content creators who, you know, are into sustainable fashion or who promote repairing garments. And so um, one of the people I watch is with Wendy. She's on the lower left. And so she's always repairing items or kind of like recreating stuff herself instead of like buying it. So it's definitely more like advanced, but it's definitely still like a fun activity to do, especially if you like fashion as well. Um, oops, let's see, something on the chat. Let me get something. Yeah, she is great. Yes. We watch our garments in cold water and hang dry. Yeah, that's always like, and it's, I feel like it's better on the, the fabrics as well. And then another person that I really enjoy too is Blueprint DIY. Um, I couldn't get any videos, but here's kind of like a before and after. Here's how she turned an old or like maybe a trench coat that she wasn't maybe feeling anymore into a two piece. And so that's another way that you can use fabrics that you already have and make like a new item and give it a new life. So that's definitely another message that is a part of sustainable fashion is giving your items life another a new life and you know keeping the the circular fashion going and then i have this quote by ursula de castro which is the co-founder of fashion revolution and mending your clothes can really truly be a political statement because it implies that you have a different attitude to shopping so i i really love that that quote and i i think for me this year is definitely wanting to to repurpose. So, um, okay. So just one last thing before I finish, I have some challenges for all of y'all who are here. Um, I would love for y'all to participate in Fashion Revolution, which takes uh, place in April. And it was basically a response to the Rana Plaza collapse. So just follow Fashion Revolution and see what kind of prompts they have. It's a really fun week and you learn a lot. And I think most of their events are going to be online. So I learned a lot last year when I when I tuned in. So really recommend that. And also, if you don't need to, I would challenge you to not participate in Black Friday this year. I know that you know sometimes prices are accessible for people at that time. But if you don't need anything, then um, that's a little challenge I have for you. So I think we are. Are we good on time? Do I? Yes. The questions, but these yes. are these are almost ten minutes. Resources. Okay, so yeah, these are some of the resources that I learn a lot from Fashion Revolution. Clearly, they're super great, and you know, they're all they have um, uh, they have them in Mexico. They have the U.S. team, the Europe team, so they're all over the place. Slow Factory is really good. Remake Our World, Sustainable Fashion Forum is super great. Good on you app if you're kind of curious, like oh, okay, so like. 
I shop at Old Navy, like what are some sustainable brands that are like similar to Old Navy? You can go on the Good On You app and it can tell you, you know, what brands are similar. Or if you're curious to see if maybe a brand that you really love is sustainable or not, that's what the Good On, Good On You app is for. They also have a website. And then as a barber, Celine Seman with Wendy Blueprint DIY. And even I saw, um, it's called Take Care of Texas. I got like a newsletter and they also talked about um, sustainable fashion. So that was so, it was just so cool to see it because most of the people I follow are like in Europe. And so it's really nice to know that, you know, we have that here in Texas and also, you know, the, the Office of Environmental Quality and Sustainability here in Dallas. So it's really exciting for me to do this here in Dallas. So I think that's it. I and mean, I can, you know, open up for questions as well. If anyone has any questions? Let's see, I see some things on the chat. Uh, one of the first questions somebody had was, what do you think about Mercari? Mercari? It's also like Depop, right? I think, um, yeah, there's there's a, it's that one and is it Posh? Not Poshmark, Premark. No, I think they're all, they're all pretty great. Um, I haven't used them. I kind of stick to, to Depop. I guess I just like the way it's so like visually looks nice. So but no, I heard good things. I had a friend who who would shop from there and would sell stuff on there. So I think it's pretty good. And then another question is, as they said, also, I love that in Prado, Italy, they are recycling wool garment fibers and masks. And they asked if you know of any entity, entity in the USA or Texas that's doing something similar to that. I was trying to find a link last night because I don't know. I can send it to y'all, but I was asked once, um, where we could go to recycle fabrics because I wanted to do that too because there's you know some materials that I can't donate to like shelters or thrift stores because they're just like so worn out so um, I can look into that I know there was something in Dallas that recycled fabric but I will have to get back to you on that one but yes there there is stuff here in Texas and Dallas here as well I was going to say, I, okay, so I used to work at H&M, and I know people would donate clothes there to get a discount, but I don't really know what they use that for, so I probably wouldn't recommend that, but I, yeah, no, <laughs> they made it seem, they made it seem like that's what they were doing, that's the, like, the narrative that they gave us, because even, like, as a staff member, that's the, the, the idea they gave me, that when I was donating clothes, it was going to be repurposed, but I was like, I have I'm pretty sure that's not what y'all are doing with this material. I have a funny story actually um I was sad at that point but you know now it's kind of funny so I applied to H&M and they were like oh well why do you want to work here and I had just found out that they were like the most transparent sustainable brand and so I was like you know I just found out that y'all are sustainable blah 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 you know just went on how how I was I would love to work for a company that was like that and then I didn't get the job so I was really sad at that point because I, I would wanted to work, you know, at a company that was sustainable. And then, you know, now learning stuff about sustainable fashion, it's like, oh, that's why they didn't hire me. That's OK. Don't worry. So it's just kind of funny to me. That's like, oh, like y'all knew that y'all were <laughs> Yeah, the amount, the amount of clothes and stuff that they make and mm -hmm. stuff so quickly, like even when you said the seasons thing, I was like, yeah, I remember like it always felt like we were just getting new wardrobe all the time. And I was like, mm -hmm. isn't it so cold? Yeah. And that's, that's another uh, a term I didn't add on here because I didn't want to like put to too much information, but definitely um, greenwashing is something that a lot of brands are doing now because they're noticing that people are interested in being, you know, more eco-friendly, more conscious. Mm -hmm. And so, so some brands are just putting like, oh, we're sustainable, like on their brand, on like their bios or anything, but they don't really, when you ask them like, oh, you know, like what, how do you, are your garments produced? What's the working conditions like? They're not being very transparent. So mm -hmm. I think with the rise of more interested, people being interested in wanting to shop sustainably, some brands are taking advantage of that and also doing greenwashing, which is kind of like, well, H&M would be one of those those brands that, because H&M has the money to to be sustainable, but they just, you know. Yeah. So. Okay, we have some fun questions for you. Somebody asked, where, do, where what thrift stores do you like the best? Thrift stores. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I grew up in the Fort Worth area and there was a thrift town like down the street from me. That was my favorite one. And then it closed. And then I didn't know until this year that there's a thrift town in Oak Cliff. 
I always find so many good things at Thrift Town. I I love her. Um, also, if you feel like doing a road trip, um, Savers in Austin is really good. I'm not sure if there's anything closer, but I always find really great things at Savers. I found, so I really love wearing blazers. I'm kind of surprised I didn't wear one today, but some of my most favorite blazers are from Savers. I found, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, Pendleton blazer. It's like a, I guess like a good quality brand. And so, um, yeah, Savers and Thirst Town are good. There's also another one on Northwest Highway. It's like St. Vincent. That one's really good. That one has a really nice like house decor though too. So those are some of my favorite thrift stores. I, I know a lot of people love Texas thrift, but I just like can never find anything there. I like so. Thrift Giant. I used to go to that one in Denton. Oh, Thrift Giant. Yeah, I heard Denton has some good stuff, but I'm kind of yeah. lazy. <laughs> but yeah. You have to drive three hours to Austin, but not the hour to. Well, Austin's different, okay? It's like a real road. <laughs> I know. My logic is in the best, I guess, you could say. Um, But that's also because we're friends. Um, Somebody also asked, well, I would love to have your information for fashion advice. That was from Melinda. Oh, my God. Yeah, we will have another slide up. Yeah, I was going to say, we can share your blog, website, and then your social media. Yeah, and I meant to say, if anyone wants to do a style consultation, like, I am also very into styling as well, um, because defining your personal style also helps you be more conscious whenever you're shopping. So um, I'd be, you know, anyone who's in this video call, um, I'd be willing to, you know, have a little style um, consultation with y'all. Someone asked what's my favorite accessory. Dang, that's a hard one. Um, I would say, hmm, that's hard. I would say blazers. You just said that you said blazers are, but that's not necessarily an accessory. Yeah, but. it's kind of more like a garment. I guess like, um, earrings, <laughs> jewelry. I mean, jewelry would be earrings. I would, I would say earrings. I do love hats too and necklaces, but I kind of feel naked when I don't have earrings now. It wasn't like that. There was a time where, like, I would wear earrings when I was younger, and then I stopped wearing earrings, and then I'm wearing them again. And then it's like, I feel naked. Scarves. Yeah, I was going to say, someone else share um, who what's their, fa- their favorite um, accessories that they like to wear. Yeah, scarves. Definitely, accessories are definitely a great way to um, make it an outfit that maybe you're repeating look different. So maybe you're repeating an outfit, but you didn't wear a necklace that one day, and then you can add something that makes it look a little bit different but you're wearing the same thing and also thrift stores are a really great place to look for accessories as well scarves are great um yes it can be tied in the purse of the hair yes I I I wanted to try that too giving your purses a new life as well so let's see purses and hats yes purses and hats like I said I've been getting really into purses I didn't like purses at one point I was like purses whatever I don't care about them but (laughs) I have just been finding really good ones at the thrift store. I'm kind of like shocked that I even find them. Um, but let's see, earrings are a mess. Uh, I'm going to jump in here real quick to share some information about the textile recycling uh, options yes. that are available in this area. So there is something called Simple Recycling, simplerecycling.com, uh, where you can recycle textiles. Depending on where you live, some cities actually offer that. So, like, you can get one of those donation bags from your uh, certain cities um, offer that service. Uh, unfortunately, it's not offered in Dallas, but you can also go directly through Simple Recycling to recycle your textiles. Another one that's also available is called Souls for Souls. So, like, soul shoes, the number four, for souls, like mm-hmm. our human soul. And that one, they collect shoes uh, and clothing, and they, they help. Uh, different people in need around the world. So it could be from disaster relief. You know, people need items uh, that were in some sort of natural disaster. Also, people are in poverty. And also, sometimes if the items that are in good enough quality, they're able to ship it to people in other places, and they can sell it as a source of income to to help their family. And there is um, different, you can go to their website, and they have a drop-off locator. So like, for example, some BFW shoe stores are are also a drop-off. For souls, oh, cool. and then also uh, there is a company called United Recyclers, 
uh, up in uh, either Far North Dallas or maybe Carrollton, right on the Dallas border. They recycle many different things, and they are also a drop off for solar. Cool. And thank then, you. Um, oh, no problem. And the last thing you know, you mentioned about the um, different kinds of fabrics and how uh, some of the fabrics can release plastics. You know, we have a big issue with microplastics. There are a couple of things that you can add to your laundry that can help collect microplastics. Uh, for example, this is, I think it's called a fur zapper. Uh, this is like a gummy sticky thing and you add it to your, your washing machine and or your dryer. And since it's adhesive, it collects those little particles. So it, it, it's mainly targeted for people with pets who might have dog hair on their clothing, uh, but also it can collect other things like microplastics and things like that. And then that's really cool. Yeah, I hadn't heard so, of that one, Helen. Yeah, I, I actually got this at a big box store. So it was I was surprised at how easy this was to find. Uh, so I got this at a big box store. Now something that's a little uh, uh, this one you won't find at a big box store. This one I ordered online from the company. This is called a Cora ball, like like C coral, uh, C O R A Cora ball. And this is designed, you put it in your washing machine and it goes around with your clothes, and it is designed to um, capture microfibers and lint and other little things like that so it doesn't go into uh, the wastewater and then end up in our uh, lakes, rivers, and ocean. Now this is, uh, this is much more expensive than these fur zappers. These fur zappers were uh, much more affordable and easier to find. But these are two options to help you if you have some of those um, garments that might be made from those synthetic fibers. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And I know uh, Carmina sharing her screen and it has the souls for souls for anybody that wants. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I just <laughs> to, uh, the to, um, I look up for places for shoes. That's pretty cool. I didn't know about that. And I do have shoes that I often want to like donate, but now I know this. So I'm probably going to keep it myself. And just uh, forewarning everyone, I will be sending a recording of this. So I'll be sending like book recommendations from the library that you could check out as well as like the the PowerPoint presentation. I think Armina said she was willing to share that for anybody that wants to um, look yeah. at it for the resources and stuff. Um, and then we'll be sending out a survey in case y'all want to give any other suggestions on um, other program ideas with um, the department. So yeah, thanks for any everyone yeah. for joining us. I think I had maybe one more question, and then yeah, we can. I end think it there's there. a question I didn't get to answer. Um, yeah, there was from Brittany. Yes, Brittany. They asked what made you interested in the topic and then where, where sustainability did Sustainability in general. Mm -hmm. um, so I have always kind of liked fashion, but something kind of always told me that something was a little bit off. And so I actually found out about sustainable fashion um, one year, but then I didn't really do much research. And I just saw that all the brands were super expensive. And I was like, oh, you know, this is not for me. And then I came back a year later into the topic and I noticed like, oh my gosh, I have been accidentally sustainable for a while. Like I have been surf shopping for a while. And to me, it was, I don't know, I guess I'm really passionate about, you know, making sure that although I look, I feel good and look good, that I find ways that are, you know, environmental friendly and also just reading about the conditions of the garment workers. Um, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, apparently Fashion Nova, they're one of their factories in LA, if I'm not mistaken, or California. Um, right now, they have a COVID-19 outbreak. And so, you know, they're, nobody's really speaking up about it. Like, you know, they're brand ambassadors and stuff. So um, it just really, to me, was just kind of hearing how garment workers are treated and just the numbers when it comes to the pollution of just fashion production in general, not just fast fashion, that got me interested into being like, okay, so I'm going to take this challenge to, you know, but I love fashion and I want to style myself, but I also want to make sure that I'm doing it in a mindful way. So that's kind of what really got me interested and in this topic. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Thanks again for presenting yeah. for us today, Carmina. Yeah. I, I know I learned more information than I was yeah, aware of because I know I some stuff, but um, watching you present on it gave me some more information to kind of mm -hmm. be mine. Yeah. And so, stuff. yeah. And like I said, there's some, re I'll, I'll share this with everyone. There's resources if anyone's, you know, interested in still learning and, you know, you can always reach out to me um, and I'm great. But, you know, I can answer anything you have. Awesome. I'll answer the questions we have. Yeah, for sure.
And we also want to uh, encourage everyone to take our quick little feedback poll. It's only two, uh, two question, three questions. Uh, it will help us with our programming. And also, like Pat mentioned, she or somebody from the library will send out an email in a few days that has these resources that Carmina shared, along with a link for another survey to help us um, get your feedback on the programs that you would like to see. Uh, and if you fill out that second survey that's coming in the email, uh, you, also, you can also qualify for another thank you gift for doing that. And also remember, send your name and mailing address to greendallas at dallascityhall.com to get your thank you gift for attending this meeting. And I want to thank the Dallas Public Library and Carmina for this wonderful presentation and for the chat that was lively and another way to share resources. And so thank everybody for participating today. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, hope yes, to see you all again so for another much. one of our Earth Day Everyday programs or Grow With Us. We also do programs on Mondays with the Department of Environmental Quality, Quality and Sustainability. So please check those out as well if you all want to learn any gardening tips or anything like that. We do a lot of great programs. Thank you. Y'all have a thank good you. rest of the week. Take care. Bye. Bye.